Okay, Shalom Lachulam, Mos Menim Laod Limud Yeshaya, Beyom Revi'i Be'erev. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Wednesday night Isaiah study. Okay, so tonight we're looking at Isaiah chapter 49. Okay, it's one of the, uh, it's the second servant song chapter in the book of Isaiah. And I titled the study for tonight, Anti-Missionary Objections Using the Servant Songs in Isaiah. Okay, so we'll look at that. So uh, before we begin, let's open up with a word of prayer. Okay, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can gather together and study your word and study your truths according to your word, Lord, in Isaiah. We ask, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts, you would help us live our lives for your glory. And Lord, we pray for Israel. I ask that you would help them to overcome their enemies in uh, Hamas and Hezbollah. Lord, I pray for this current administration in the United States. I, I ask, Lord, that you would move in their hearts to give Israel the military need that they need because uh, they are withholding stuff right now. Lord, I pray that you would uh, move in their hearts, Lord, in a, in a powerful way, even for salvation, Lord. And, and we ask that you would do all of these things, Lord, in Yeshua's name. And I ask, Lord, that you'd be with those families who have lost their loved ones, Lord, and uh, give them comfort. And we just pray these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Okay, so <laughs> let's look here at... And now, uh, here is what we're looking at for tonight. Okay, so um, Isaiah 49, verses 1 through 6. And again, I titled anti-missionary objections using the servant songs in isaiah and the the before we begin um the basic uh premise is that these are songs and they refer to israel they don't refer to the messiah okay and we know that uh these these uh chapters are very unique from the sense that what we will talk about here tonight but now in chapter 49 i'd mentioned that this is the second servant, second of the servant songs that's found in Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah. And we note that there are four slash five servant songs chapters in Isaiah, which describe the service, the suffering, the exaltation of the king, the servant king Messiah of God. Okay, so we note how this is a, a that in, in chapter 49, there is a very subtle change in the narrative where neither Cyrus nor Babylon are mentioned again. You know, so while the servant continues to maintain a dominant theme in his chapter, and in addition, the servant is no longer the passive servant that we've read in Isaiah 40 through chapter 48, you know, whose mere existence is to be the evidence of the helplessness of the gods, right, of the nations, right? So rather, it is the servant who was introduced at the beginning of the first servant song, according to Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 9, who will be God's agent to bring his covenant to the people and justice to the nations. We note again how the servant is described to be a light unto the nations, a light unto the Gentiles. And we note Isaiah is again describing uh, this characteristic of the Messiah, indicating that his mission extends beyond the nation of Israel and on into the entire world. And this aligns with what we read in the New Testament text about Yeshua as being a light unto the Gentiles. And we read that here in Luke chapter 2, verse 32. It states, let me check something here real quick. Okay. Okay, so it states a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people, Israel, right, Israel. And so the New Testament authors here in, in Luke 2, verse 32, quote from the passage in Isaiah explaining how Yeshua fulfilled the various prophecies concerning the King Messiah. You know, we note that by fulfilling these things, like, you know, it, it right, we read in Matthew 5 that Yeshua fulfilled Torah, you know, and Matthew 5 through 7 there, and he fulfilled Torah. It doesn't mean that the Torah has passed away. You know, he, he kept Torah perfectly, right? And so, again, you know, these, these servant song chapters include chapter 42, chapter 49, chapter 50, and then chapters 52 and 53. You know, some combine those to be one, and others, you know, they'll separate them into two separate. So the servant song can be either four or five chapters in Isaiah. 
So um, these songs describe the service, the suffering, the exaltation of the servant of the Lord, who is identified as the Messiah. And the content of these chapters directly connect Isaiah's words to the New Testament text. So the connection is so obvious that the anti-missionaries have stated that because these are servant songs of Isaiah, the words in the songs are somehow of lesser value or lesser weightiness concerning the Messiah of God. And so um, their claim is that these are just songs. They don't mean anything. We'll look at that. We'll see what, what um, you know, how, how uh, pathetic of an of a, uh, anti-missionary claim, you know, this is. And um, we'll use scripture to do that. So um, the anti-missionaries, they say that these, because these are servant songs, that they are somehow of lesser value. The words of Isaiah are somehow of lesser value, are not as weighty concerning the Messiah of God. So the, we note that the anti-missionaries, their goal, their effort, is to, again, to destroy faith in the New Testament text concerning who Yeshua is and what his mission was and what he did suffering for the forgiveness of sins. And, and I'm convinced that when we don't understand the scriptures, we don't know what the scriptures say, we don't know what the Bible says, it is then that uh, we can be deceived. And I'm convinced that those who don't know the scriptures will die in their sins because they don't know Yeshua or they reject Yeshua. You know, like we, I see this happen quite often in the Messianic uh, movement where many will reject the New Testament account of Yeshua and reject, you know, and then they'll buy into these anti missionary arguments and whatnot. So um, that's why I wanted to talk about this uh, tonight. And so. The text right here from Luke chapter 2 verse 32 connects the New Testament to the, you know, the, the narrative to the Isaiah text here in chapter 49. And so these, these chapters in Isaiah, and again, let me, uh, let me list them. They are chapter 42, 49, 50, and then 52 and 53, okay? And so these, these chapters are identified by scholars as songs, and that's based upon their poetic structure and their thematic content. So the songs are a series of prophetic prophecies about the servant who would bless the world through his life, his labor, you know, his works, and his suffering. And so I thought to highlight the content of these different chapters from Isaiah, and we'll look at that here. And so I, I kind of summarized the, you know, in a short form, a summary of the servant song chapters in Isaiah. So the first, let's see here. Um, uh, okay. So now. Okay, let me go back to the. Always have some kind of a um, visual problem, right? Um, it, it, it's the the browser slow. The computer's having trouble keeping up with the streaming and everything. Okay, so anyway, so short summary of the servant song chapters in Isaiah. And the first is from Isaiah chapter forty-two, verses one through nine. So the first servant song speaks of the servant of the Lord being chosen by God. Okay, being chosen by God, and how. The Lord God delights in him, and the servant has the Spirit of God abiding on him. He will bring justice to the nations and will not falter to be discouraged until he establishes justice on earth. Okay, so next is in this chapter tonight, chapter 49, verses 1 through 13. And this is the second servant song, and it describes the servant as ministering to the nations, you know, teaching the coastlands, caring for justice, and serving as a light unto the nations and a covenant to the people. So the servant is called from the womb, and his mouth is made like a sharp sword. Okay, And then Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 11. And so this is the third servant song, and it continues the theme of the servant's obedience and willingness to suffer for the sake of his mission, for the sake 
of which God had sent him, right? And then lastly, chapter Isaiah 52, verse 13 to 53, verse 12. And that's the fourth servant song, and it's also known as the suffering servant passages. Okay, so the prophet, this prophesies of the uh, suffering and the death of the servant Messiah. The servant has humble origins, experiences suffering and affliction, accepts vicarious and substitutionary suffering on behalf of his people, and is put to death after being condemned. Okay, so we note again how these chapters are identified or characterized as songs by their lyrical quality and the, the repetitive repetition of certain themes such as the calling, the mission, the suffering, the exaltation of the servant. Okay, so in addition to this, the <laughs> characterization of these chapters as songs does not decrease the prophetic meaning of these verses. On the contrary, it enhances their impact and the use of music and song and prophecy is well documented in the scriptures. We just look at the Psalms, right? And for example, in a concrete example from the Tanakh, okay, from, from the Nevi'im section of the, the Old Testament, okay, the, the prophet section, um, we remember in 2 Kings chapter 3, verses 15 to 16, how the prophet Elisha valued musical accompaniment as a means of providing an environment for prophecy. So the example here in context is that in 2 Kings chapter 3, Elisha calls for a musician to play, and while the music was playing, it says, the, the scriptures say, the hand of the Lord was upon him and he prophesied. So this is a, a proof text, it can be used as a proof text, that is evidence for in from the Tanakh that the servant song chapters do not lower the weightiness of the prophetic message. You know, remember that that's the anti-missionary claim that because this is a song, it has no prophetic weight. Okay, and or it has some it, it holds some kind of lower stature compared to the rest of the scriptures. So uh, the the point is is here in Second Kings chapter three we see how Elisha used music and it was when the instruments played that the hand of the lord fell upon him and he prophesied so you know again this is evidence that the servant song chapters do not lower the weightiness of the prophetic message in addition the song is used to highlight the prophetic messages right i mean it's used to uh help remember right in, in music lyrics song is is used to remember to make something more impactful on our lives you know to elicit an emotional response okay and so the servant songs the song actually enriches the prophetic meaning of these verses it's actually the opposite of what the anti-missionaries claim and this is significant because uh, the anti-missionaries want to destroy faith. They want to destroy the understanding of the scriptures in, in this way, right? And so, again, you know, the, the, the idea that this is a song actually enhances the prophetic meaning of these verses. Now, these chapters 42, 49, 50, and then 52 and 53 collectively present a picture of the Messiah as a servant who is chosen and upheld by God and brings justice to the nations. He serves as a light to the Gentiles and willingly suffers for the sins of the world. You know, the Isaiah chapters show the Messiah as God's meek and gentle servant, a royal figure representing Israel in its ideal form, and a high priest atoning for the sins of the world. So the servant faithfully completes all the work that he is given to do. And in Isaiah 49, the servant is depicted as a royal figure representing Israel. The servant is tasked with bringing Jacob back to God, gathering Israel to himself, right? The servant also is also described as a light for the Gentiles, indicating that his mission extends beyond the nation of Israel to all nations, right? And this aligns with the New Testament narrative where Yeshua as the Messiah is seen as a light unto the Gentiles like we had seen in Luke chapter 2, verse 32 and John 18, verse 12. So the New Testament authors often quote from these passages from Isaiah 49 explaining that Yeshua fulfilled the various 
prophecies contained within them. And for example, in Acts chapter 3, verse 13 here, okay, uh, Peter refers to Yeshua as the servant of God, drawing a direct connection between Yeshua and the servant that is described in Isaiah. So here it says that the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, have glorified his son Yeshua, Jesus, right? Whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Okay, so here Peter boldly speaks to the Sanhedrin about Yeshua, calling him the servant of God, which is a connection to the servant songs of Isaiah. And again, we emphasize how Isaiah, how Yeshua is referred to as the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12. You know, and his his ministry and his teachings focused on the restoration of Israel and the inclusion of Gentiles in God's plan of salvation. And again, you, this these things align with the themes that are presented in Isaiah chapter 49. Okay, so that's what I have for the introduction to Isaiah 49. So next, let's look at the Isaiah text directly.